38 years ago, Shmini Atzeret was also on a Shabbos. How do I know? Because I'll never forget that day. My father had been battling cancer for months. And at his request, no one except for our immediate family and his doctors knew the truth. He didn't want to be pitied as he fought that horrible disease. And he wanted to continue to contribute, to work, to lead, to do all of the things he had always done with such skill and talent. But by Shmini Atzeret of that year, things were not going in the right direction. My father was running out of strength. And despite all of the care of the doctors, and Yibada L'chaim Tovim Varukim, my mother, for those of us who saw him, we, need, we knew things weren't good. That year, the Yisker of Shmini Atzeret came and went. And I was fortunate to be among those whose parents were alive, whose children were alive, and therefore not needing to say the memorial prayer. But that evening, after Hakafot, Margaret and I went to my parents' home where we were staying. It was before there was an Eruv. And to be with family, we used to move in every Shabbos. And when we went back to my parents' home, my in-laws came over as well. My father was lying on the couch in the den, noticeably weak. And my in-laws went in to say hello. It was then that my father chose to tell them the truth, which I'm sure my father-in-law, one of the most talented diagnosticians anyone ever met, had probably figured out on his own with my mother, my in-laws, Margaret and I in the room. My father turned to my in-laws and shared what we had been keeping secret for so many months. And then he turned to them and asked them to take care of Margaret and me, to make sure that even when he would no longer be around, that they would be there in his stead. It was a moment of strength I'll never forget, but also a moment of intense pain as for the very first time, Margaret and I could no longer hide behind an illusion that things would be all right, that somehow he'd pull through. The very next Shabbos, my father passed away in his sleep. And in another exceptional moment of strength, my mother, chose not to tell any of us that he had passed away until after we went to shul to celebrate a family simcha and then came home. Only then, one by one, did she tell us that he was gone. From that day on, my life changed. I was no longer among the fortunate who could stay outside for Yisker. I was no longer a child who had two living parents. And I was no longer a person who had avoided the pain of the passing of a loved one. My father died. And for the past 38 years, Yisker has become part of my routine four times a year, but I still struggle with Yisker. Not with the words, not with the custom, but with the balance between memory and memorial, faith and fortitude, sorrow and simcha, 
because Yusker is, as I've said before, a conflicted moment. It's a time when we confront our losses, but it's also one which Chazal chose to place three out of four times on the holidays. Yamim Tovim, when we're asked to rejoice, tasked with communal celebration and familial festivity. How can the tears and pain coexist with this time of joy, this Zman Simchatenu? There's a medrash that many of you know, which frames the holiday of Shmini Atzeret, a parable offered by a chazal of a king who throws a lavish party for many guests. When all is done and everyone has left, he asks his son to stay for one more day because he doesn't want to be separated so quickly. So too say chazal that after the Jewish people offered 70 animals and prayed, for the salvation of God's entire world, the 70 nations, God asks us to spend one more day. Why does God really need us to be with him for one more day? And why now after Sukkot and not after any other holiday? I believe that the answer is because the past six weeks, we've thrust ourselves into the most intense religious experience imaginable. We have prayed more, prepared more, pleaded more than at any other time of the year. And that's just nowadays, when unfortunately there is no Beit HaMikdash. Can we even imagine what these days must have been like with all of the splendor and ritual majesty and glory of a Beit HaMikdash. We've done all of that. And then comes Hoshana Rabbah, the final day of Sukkot and the last day of the high holiday season, when the final kvittel is recorded, the decree is handed down in our fate is determined. But before we move forward, God asks us to stay a little longer, not for his sake, but for ours. Because despite the focus, the attention, and even the pageantry of Elul, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and now Sukkot, the year we're about to enter will be a year filled with many more quiet moments than public events. There will be times when we will feel alone, moments when we may ache for some of the inspiration of the season and even situations when the challenges we face leave us feeling unprepared and maybe even a little abandoned. So God asks of us, stay one more day, just you and me. Prepare for the coming year through the relative quiet of this day and do it with me, said God. Be with me now and forever. And to help us in this task, Chazal gave us Yisker, a quiet moment within a quiet day to remind us not only of our obligations to the past, but to guide us forward into the future. And to do this, they ask us to remember, not be sad, but wiser, to remember that the life we will re-enter will have both moments of joy and sorrow, moments of challenge, but opportunities to move forward just as we've moved forward from our personal losses. Kashel, I pray that chem, our departure from this season will be difficult, but not if we hold on to the inspiration, to the connection, 
and the memories of those who lit the way for us. For me, the quiet of this day will give me the moment to reflect on the way our community has rallied around this year, the way we have created a safe and inspiring high holiday season. And I will take that forward into the new year, remembering it whenever I feel overwhelmed, knowing that I have a community and I have friends and colleagues who will step forward to support me and all of us. And this Yisker will remind me of the strength of my father, the strength to face the most difficult moments with grace, with dignity, and with determination. And of course, I'll remember his concern for me and for Margaret, for all of our family, his ability to look forward into the future, even when his days were numbered. Stay with me one more day, said God. And when we do, we can move forward into the new year, knowing that God is with each one of us, his beloved children, and we are with God. May the memories of all those we are about to remember be for a blessing. And will, will God please help us keep those memories with us from now and forevermore. And now it is my honor to call upon Jeremy Amster to begin the Yisker service with the first two memorial prayers, those in which we remember the murdered victims of the Shoah, and those who gave their lives for defending the state of Israel. Jeremy. Elmol Rachamim, Shochem Amramim, Hametzeim Nechanechana, Akanfei Ashechina, Bimalas Kidoshimu Tahrim Kizawa Haraki Yamasirim Eskohaneshamos Shall Sheshes Bilyone Hayyudim Khalei Hashoa Vienopa Shenergo Shanishatu Shanis Revo Vishanis Bu Akidu Shashem Vide Hamarat Stream Hagemoni Vyozelehem Mishion Wami Babu Shekoako Homies Balim Lilishmo Sehem Lochein Bal Harachamim Yasirain the Seisek and of all the Olamim Bitsor Bitsora Chaim as Nishmo Sehem Adonai Nachalasam Began to Haim Nuchasam Yanuko Bishlama Mishgrosayam Liamdu, the Garalam, the Kate Sayami, the Namar Amen El Moli Rahamim Shochem Amrami. Hametzeim nechan nechana Al kanfei ashechina V'malaz kidoshim tehorim v'giborim 
ki zavahra ki hamazinim lenishma zakedoshim shanil chamu v'chamar chos Yisraelim b'amachter svitzah haganal Yisraelim v'shenaflo b'milchamatam. Umasu nafsham, akudushas hashem, hawam vihores. Babu ashanu mispalim, yunish bosehem, lochein bal horachami bosehem, adonai hu nachalasaham. Vigane Yedem Nilchasam Vyanuchu Vishalam Amishkivasam Vissam Alvacho Yisrael Zichusam Vyam Dua Lagaralam Lakeitsayamin Vinamar Amen Please join with me in reciting the opening paragraph of the Yisker. Adonai ma'adam v'tedeu ben enosh v'at chashveu. Adam lehevel dama yamav kitzel over baboker yatzitz v'chalaf le'erev yemolel v'yavesh. Nimnot yamenu ken odam v'navil v'av chokmam shmortam u'rei yashar ki acharit li'ish shalom. Ach Elohim yiv de nafshi miyad sh'ol ki gacheni selam. Kala she'eriu levavi, sur levavi v'chelki Elohim li'olam, v'yashov he'afar ha'la'aretz kishahaya, v'aruach tashuv el ha'Elohim asher netanam. And now, please take the time to recite the memorial prayers for Yisker. And now to recite the final Kelmale in, in commemoration of the lives of those from our shul who have passed away, I call once again upon Jeremy Amster. A canve a shechina Bimalas kidal shimuta hovnim Kidzawa hawaki amasirim 
es nishmos kochav rei beisakenesses kenesses Israel nusach sefar shelchul yolama babu shanu mispalim yaras kars nishmos sehiem Vigana <laughs> Amishkevar sehem, vinamar amen.